Hello everyone, good evening. Our topic tonight is about what happens to us when we die. I would like to reiterate that the reason I am doing this live is because primarily I read in Matthew that Jesus says that those who don't understand the word and the doctrine will be taken away by the enemy so I wanted to study again the to review the doctrines so that uh, like in the parable of the uh, planter who threw seeds in the path in the rocky ground in the nice ground that we will become fruitful uh, the word of God will bear fruit through us so uh, everything is set the question is what happens when you die of course we will look at the answer from the Bible let us pray as we start our Father in heaven forgive us from our sins be merciful to us Lord please send the Holy Spirit to lead us Lord as we study your word without you we don't understand anything and we cannot change our thinking and our lives according to your will thank you for hearing our prayers in Jesus name we pray amen okay let's go there was a missionary in Belgian Congo in 1956 his name is Dr. Paul Carlson and he they were attacked by rebel forces and they I think the hospital was burned down or killed and the body was found dead and but in his diary he or in the paper they found a written a note he said peace the question is why did dr paul carlson have peace even if rebels attack their hospital and even if they were killed how about us uh, of course nobody knows how uh, nobody wants to die but what is beyond life what is beyond the grave why why are we afraid to die huh what happens after that is a question we know that death is not uh, fun even if our loved ones die it hurts us we cry it's because uh, life is very precious we don't want to be far from life it's like being far from God because God says I am the way the truth and life so it uh, it is agonizing death is agonizing more so also eternal death is most agonizing because of sin that's going to happen so what does the Bible say about what happens when we die? Eh? There are many things that ideas, conflicting ideas, but we want to see what is in the Bible. And we also want to see uh, so that we will be corrected, just in case our idea is not correct. <clears throat> Jesus himself died on the cross. His uh, friends placed his body in the tomb. Pilate, the Roman governor, they put guard on the tomb and sealed the stone covering the mouth of the tomb with a Roman seal. And so that nobody can escape or can take Jesus' body and claim that he rose up. But on Sunday morning, an angel came from heaven, rolled back the stone, the heavy stone, and called for Jesus to resurrect and Jesus resurrected himself and stepped forth in complete and total victory over death that means Jesus raised up from the dead 
by himself. Jesus could conquer death. All of us, when we die, no hope. But Jesus can resurrect himself. That's why our loyalty is to Jesus. Okay? The soldiers were blinded by the glory of the angel and struck helpless in his presence. I think they died. That means, if Jesus can resurrect, then we have peace if we are in Jesus. And we, it will give us purpose. That's why I am teaching and lecturing so that people will have hope and purpose because Jesus is our hope. He can resurrect us when we die, if we die. Because Jesus is alive, therefore our boss, who is Jesus, no problem. Even if we die as martyrs, God can raise us back to life into eternal life. Because Jesus, because of Jesus, the Christians, we have confidence and hope beyond the grave. Death is not the final end. It is just a temporary thing. Those who die, who die in Christ will live again. Amen. How about the pagans? They don't have any hope. Their gods are still dead. Or there is no proof. But Christians, we all know that about 2,000 years ago, Jesus lived and died for us and as an example. Written in the tombs of those who did not believe in Jesus Christ were hopeless inscriptions. For example, it says, Goodbye forever or goodbye for eternity. But in the Christian tombs, it says goodbye until we meet again or goodbye until the morning. So, the Christianity has more hope if we understand it correctly. It says here in Revelation 1.18 I am he who lives and was dead and behold I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and death. That means if we die, Jesus Christ can free us from death. He can open the grave. The Apostle Paul also said about uh, life after death. If the dead do not rise, that means the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. Oh, if Jesus Christ did not rise up, then there is no hope. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. Why, why, why can... So those... Uh, if Jesus Christ did not resurrect, then no need for Christianity. Because we're gonna die anyway. Just enjoy and die. But because Jesus Christ can rise up from the death, Jesus, we can also rise up and have everlasting life. You are still in your sins. No need for overcoming sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. Those who are, who are martyrs, no hope for them. But because Jesus Christ ro rose up from the dead, then we have hope. Why do we die? Because of sin. Yeah, We die because of sin. And sin separates us from God. This happens after the fall in genesis it says so therefore it says you shall eat of the herb of the field after we sin we eat in the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground so where are we going when we die it says in genesis 3 18 we return to the ground because for out of it you were taken and from dust you are, and from dust you shall return. Where are you from? Where are we from? From dust. Where are we formed from? From the dust. And when we die, we are going back to the dust. According to Genesis 3.18. So, that is the formula. Now, let's look in the ingredients. <clears throat> Genesis 2.7 <clears throat> And the Lord God formed man of the dust it's important to understand how we were created or how we may became alive 
so that we will understand how what happens when we die. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. So, what is the formula? Dust plus breath equals a living soul. Dust or body minus the breath of life when we die what remains a corpse lifeless corpse that will if you just let it there it will return to dust so that is the formula <clears throat> god said we are from dust plus he put the breath of life we became a living soul you notice my friends here soul means in genesis it is a live person if you remove the living breath it's like the software then what, re what is remaining is the hardware which decays without the life that comes from God. A lifeless corpse. Nobody can resurrect you, only God. Because we are humans, only God can resurrect. <clears throat> Ecclesiastes 12, 7 says, Then the dust will return to the earth as it was, and the spirit will return to God who gave it. Where does the dust return? To the ground, to the earth. And where does the spirit, the, which does God's breath, the spirit return? It will return to God who gave it. Job 27.3 also says, All the while my breath is in me, and the spirit of God is in my nostrils. So it is the spirit of God that helps us breathe and makes us uh, alive, makes us heart run and our lungs breathe. Psalms, David says, 146, 3 and 4, <clears throat> Do not put your trust in princes, nor in a son of man, in whom there is no help. Yes, actually, our friends cannot resurrect us. Money cannot resurrect us. Popularity, whatever here uh, men does, there is no resurrection there. That's why we do not need to trust other people. Do not trust in princesses. Do not trust in humans. <clears throat> there is no help in whom there is no help. His spirit departs. His, he returns to the earth. In that very day, his plans perish. So, that means you cannot think of anything. Your conscious thoughts stop working. In the day that we die, our plans perish. Also, so there are many verses that describe what happened when we die. Ecclesiastes 9, 5, and 6 is the most common. For the living know that they will die, but the dead know not anything, and they have no more reward, for the memory of them is forgotten, also their love, their hatred, and their envy have now perished. Do the dead know anything? No. Bible says many times that the plants perish, there is no more memory, and they know not anything. Psalms 115.17 further says that the dead do not praise the Lord, nor any who go down into silence. So, the dead cannot praise God. Job 17 also uh, agrees furthermore. If I await, if I wait, the grave is mine house. I have made my bed in the darkness. If a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my hard service I will wait till my change comes. You shall call and I will answer you. So he, when Job died, when Job dies, he is just waiting for his creator to call him. Another verse, Job 14, 10 to 13. But man dies and is laid away. Indeed, he breathes his last. And where is he? So man lies down and does not rise. Till the heavens are no more, they will not awake 
nor be aroused from their sleep. Job 14, 10 to 13. Oh, that you would hide me in the grave, that you would conceal me until your wrath is past, that you would appoint me a set time and remember me. So, let's, uh, there is a term here in the Bible called sleep, but it is used to describe death. That means, for God, death is just a sleep, but for us, we don't know how to wake up out of that kind of sleep. Consider Psalms 13, 3. And hear me, O Lord my God. Enlighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. How about Daniel? What does he say about death and the resurrection? Daniel 12, 2. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake okay. so are you sleeping in the dust that means they are dead they they shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt so there are two directions when we die if we die either we uh, wake up and resurrect to be given everlasting life or we wake up and to resurrect to to be given everlasting contempt or hell okay <clears throat> how about uh, nathan the prophet when he told king david when the days be fulfilled uh, thou shalt sleep with thy father second samuel 7 12 where is david he is sleeping with his fathers jesus himself also said uh, that death is asleep he described Lazarus, he said in John eleven five, Now Jesus loved Martha and his sister and Lazarus. They were friends. But in John eleven eleven, our friend Lazarus sleeps. But I go that I may wake him up. But the disciples did not understand. He said, Lord, they said, if he sleeps, <clears throat> he will get well. But Jesus said to them plainly that Lazarus is dead <clears throat> however jesus said i am glad for your sakes that i was not there that you may believe nevertheless let us go to him so lazarus was dead jesus said he was asleep but he said jesus just also said he was dead so when jesus talked to martha he said <clears throat> lord if you had been here my brother would not have died. And Jesus said, Your brother will rise again. Of course, Martha knows. She said, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. But Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Wow. This is also for us. Though he may die, he shall live. So, now, even if Jesus resurrected Lazarus, before he resurrected Lazarus, he actually uh, cried because of uh, uh, he was crying about the grief and that the family and friends were experiencing. Because it's so sad. You know, when somebody is crying, you also want to cry. That is what Jesus was feeling. He was not only feeling the, the pain of Lazarus' death <clears throat> and for his friends, but he was feeling the pain that he saw throughout all the ages. Because our relatives die, someday we will die. Jesus felt that and Jesus wept for all of those in John 11 verse 35. But Lord, by this time there is a tense. tense. Jesus said, you remove the stone from Lazarus' tomb. But Martha said, <clears throat> By this time there is a smell, for he has been dead for days. But they rolled away the stone, and Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. And he did. You know what? If Jesus calls you from the grave, you are going to resurrect. Because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Wow.
So if we die in Christ, someday He will call us and we will resurrect with rejoicing and joy. That's a very good news, very exciting news because someday Jesus Christ will come and when He calls all of us resurrect, then we will come out of the grave and we are going to see Him and live forevermore. Wow, that is the most amazing picture you can imagine when we resurrect from the dead and we see Jesus Christ because He wants to save us. <clears throat> so, Paul in 1 Corinthians 4.13 and 16 says, But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those things which who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So we don't need to be sad when our friends die, especially if we have preached the good news to them, and if they have accepted Jesus Christ. That's why, as much as possible, while our friends and relatives are alive, we have to teach them how, what the Bible says about salvation. So even if we die, when we die, they, we don't need to be sad because let's no, let you sorrow as others. Those who are sorrowful, they don't have hope. But we have hope. That's why we don't need to be sad. Okay? It's just sleeping. <clears throat> Behold, I tell you a mystery. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 and 55. We shall all not sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, we shall not all sleep. No. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead in Christ will, raise in, will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. In a twinkling of an eye, our problems, our disabilities will be gone. We will be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption. And this mortal has put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, Hades, where is your victory? Wow! There is nothing to be afraid of in death if we live in Christ and we die in Christ. <clears throat> because Jesus Christ overcame death and He can give us life again. Uh, Paul also says, Do not marvel as this. No, this is John that agrees with Paul. John 5, 28 to 29. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear His voice and come forth. Wow, even if we die, someday Jesus Christ will call us from our graves and we are going to rise up from our graves. Wow. Who have done good, all who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. So what are we going to do now? Do good. Don't do evil. Do good. Because those who do good will be resurrected for life. For eternal life. Those who have done evil, resurrection of condemnation. Wow. If we have done evil, there is still hope. Because we can repent. And the Lord can forgive all our sins and bury them in the bottom of the sea. <clears throat> if people actually are not in the grave, like they went to heaven already, or they went to hell already, or they went to purgatory already, who is going to resurrect from the grave when Jesus comes? Huh? So that uh, idea is not uh, in the Bible. What is in the Bible is this, Revelation 22, 12. And behold, I am come quickly, and my reward is with me. How much reward? Depending on how much good you did. 
to give everyone according to his work as his work shall be <clears throat> so my friends the bible is very clear those who die they are sleeping they are resting if you are sleeping do you know uh, do you know anything <laughs> you are resting when we die when we sleep we are resting from our troubles and labors until jesus comes again <clears throat> what is god uh, jesus christ coming for of course he is coming for to resurrect the righteous and to punish the evil he comes to because he loves us he wants to resurrect us and spend eternity with us first thessalonians 4 17 then we who are alive and remain those who uh, are alive when jesus comes we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them who are them those who were resurrected in the clouds to meet the lord in the air so those who are alive who are righteous they will meet jesus christ in the clouds those who died who are righteous they will be resurrected and with all of them will resurrect and uh, meet jesus christ in the clouds we are going to go up jesus christ is not going to step on the earth we are going to the righteous will go up and meet him in the clouds according to first thessalonians 4 70 <clears throat> and thus we shall always be with the lord how amazing yeah the one who created us the one who forgave us from all our foolishness and the one who will resurrect us he will be with jesus christ the one who invented our bodies we will be with him forever and ever how about the thief on the cross it is confusing because it says in luke 23 it says lord uh, the, the thief said uh, lord remember we when you go to come here to your kingdom and this is the verse that confuses many people <clears throat> and jesus said to him assuredly i say to you kama today you will be with me in paradise but actually my friends there is no comma in the original greek there is no uh, apostrophe or comma it's just continuous it's a mistranslation because those people who put they put a uh, comma but if you there is one way to read to understand the bible you have to read everything to, so that you can get the correct idea because sometimes there is mistranslation of language and apostrophe and comma and period etc <clears throat> how come he said jesus said today i will be with you in paradise did jesus go that friday in paradise no he was in the grave on sabbath and on sunday jesus said i have not yet ascended to my father he told the uh, Mary Magdalene who wanted to to touch and worship his feet Jesus said no don't touch me I have not gone yet to my father so he went to heaven on Sunday on Friday he was where was he he was in the grave so it is not true that Jesus said today I will be with you in paradise because on Friday Jesus was in the in the cross and after three o'clock after he died before sunset he was put in the grave the thief i don't know where they put him but they broke his legs so that he cannot escape <clears throat> jesus was dead already so jesus went to the father on sunday not on friday so it's not possible that he was uh, in heaven on friday because he was in the grave <clears throat> and he told the lady i have not yet ascended to my father okay <clears throat> therefore it was the preparation day john 19 31 and the body should not remain on the cross on the sabbath for the sabbath was a high day the jews asked pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the and of the other who was crucified with him but when they came to jesus and saw that he was already dead they did not break his legs actually it's a prophecy from the old testament that his bones were not were, will not be broken <clears throat> so that is the explanation of this com confusing uh, passage 
Jesus explained it in few verses after that he did not go to heaven on Friday, he went to heaven on Sunday. So my friends, <clears throat> if you lose a loved one, don't worry, Jesus Christ can resurrect. Let's just be faithful and help everybody to be faithful so that we will be resurrected. So that Jesus Christ can call us and we will not be afraid to wake up. And we will wake up in the resurrection when Jesus Christ calls us. There are many lots of literature now that are not true. But these are written by men who are not reliable. Let us read the Bible instead. Jesus Christ's words and the history in the Bible, that is correct. This literature, they are not correct. Mixture of truth and error and it's not nice. <clears throat> there is a... There was a missionary in Africa. The son contracted malaria. And the wife was very sad. And they went home. But when they were home, the mother heard something. Mommy, mommy. But she knew that the Bible says when the son dies, the son uh, is dead. But how come he is hearing the boy? And when he looked, the boy or something that looks like the boy was coming inside. But the wife said, Ah, you are not my son. The Bible says that the dead know not anything. When she told that, the son, who, the, the, the thing that looks like the son, became an evil angel. She saw an evil angel and then the evil angel disappeared. So my friends, if you ever see your Lola, your Lolo, your grandfather, your grandmother, or your uncle, whoever died, your son, do not believe if they died already, and you see them again, do not believe that. Those are evil angels as we studied in the previous lecture that are trying to deceive us. <clears throat> God's word is true. It's not our experiences. Our senses are not reliable because the enemy can create wonders and signs. But God's word is the best. It is true. It will not fail. Let us believe the Bible instead of our experiences. <clears throat> so my friend, uh, are you looking forward to be reunited with our friends who have gone already to the grave? No problem. Those people who have died because they were sick, they are tired of life. They are not suffering anymore. They are resting in the grave. Someday, Jesus Christ will call the righteous and we hope that we will be with them when we be resurrected from the dead. And we will meet Jesus Christ, our Creator. And that will be a happy, happy day for all of us. Let us pray. Our Father in Heaven, thank you, Lord, for making, creating us, giving us plan of salvation when we sin, and resurrecting us in the future because of your grace and mercy towards us, Lord. Everything that we have, we can ever be, Lord, we owe to you because you owe, uh, you gave us life, you lent us life, and you want to give us life eternal. What else can we ask for? We ask that you help us find other people who want to live forever also. Thank you for hearing our prayers and forgiving us from our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.